All right, here we've got a rectangle that's going to be inscribed under the one arch of the sine curve. What is the largest area the rectangle can have, and what are the dimensions? So let's just talk about this for one second. I'm going to take and create inside one arch of the sine curve a rectangle. And I want this area to I want this rectangle to have a max area, so I, I need to find the area of this rectangle, which means um, area of a rectangle is going to be x times y. So we'll call for now, we may change this. We'll call this x. Let me do that in different colors. We'll call this guy right here x. And I just drew this at random. We're going to totally nail it down and make it perfect. We'll call this y. So here's x and y. So we want the largest area the rectangle can have. What would the dimensions be? So we've got to figure this out. We want the largest rectangle. So I, I somehow have to get into terms this x and y deal so that they're related. Well, here's the thing. If I look at this first x right here, <clears throat> if I look at this x, right here, this value of x, this legit value of x. I'll call him x1. Let me just make him a totally different color so that way we're not confusing ourselves. I'm gonna look at this distance right here, this value of x from the origin. Okay, I'll call him x1, he's red x. This point right here would be f of x1, and that would be my height, okay? So the height at this point would be x1 sine of x1, okay? Now, uh, why do I say that? I say that because we've got to figure out how to identify this rectangle and get a max rectangle under this arch of a sine curve, all right? And, and so... When I, when I do that, notice that whatever value this is right here, I'm going to match it on this end as well. It's going to be the exact same because I'm going to move in the same number of units from both sides of the end of my sine curve to create my rectangle. So my rectangle is going to be centered inside that arch, under that arch. So this distance right here is going to be the same distance no matter what, all right? And so when I, when I do that, that's got to be part of my reasoning and part of the things that I got to think of when I do this. So let's just think about this now. If my whole arch of my sine curve starts at zero and goes over here to pi, and I use up this much space right here and this much space right here. And again, we don't know where X stops. How much space am I doing? How long is my rectangle? And the answer is the length of my rectangle is going to be pi minus 2X. Okay? 2X. Why? Because I've got X number of units here that I'm going to take away and, and then come in to cre start creating my rectangle. And I've got that same number right over here on this side. Okay, so whatever I move in from the zero to get into my rectangle is going to be the same distance I move in from my pi to start my rectangle. And if I move that same distance twice, that's 2X. Okay, that's my length. So my height then, which we talked about just a second ago, my height is going to be whatever value that the sine is um, of x1 at that particular point. That's going to be the height of my rectangle, okay? So now I've got a rectangle. Look, x and y right here, my x and y. So this x right here in pink now, come back to pink, this length from here to here, is going to be pi minus 2x1. And my height, we just discussed, is going to be f of x1. Okay, So what can I do? I've got now a way to relate these with a mathematical model. 
I've got an area equal to length pi minus 2x. I'm going to just work with 2x. It'll be a little easier, but it's at x1 distance times the sine of x. So one of the things that we had to do was find our critical point. Well, how do we find our critical point? Find a derivative, set the derivative equal to 0. And in this case, there's a couple different things that we can do. <clears throat> I think it's going to be a little easier to just use the product rule here. But uh, if you want to go ahead and multiply and distribute through the sign, you could do the same thing. The product rule, though, is not hard. It's simply the first term times the derivative of the second term plus the derivative of the first term. Well, the derivative of that, um, and here's, here's our terms. I'll just show you real quick. Here, here's one, here's the other. The derivative of uh, my pi minus 2x is just negative 2 times the second term. So my equation then looks like this. Pi minus 2x cosine x minus 2 sine x. Okay, so there's that guy right there. And um, what we need to do is we need to figure out where the derivative is equal to zero. So how are we going to do this? This looks really tricky. Well, we've got to see if there's a way that we can factor this guy out a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I may have to actually use a graphing calculator. Let me just double check here. It looks like I'm going to have to use some sort of graphing calculator to, to find this. I don't know that we can get an answer that's going to work since it's a trig function with a radian measure that we would know. But I would have pi cosine x minus 2x cosine x minus 2 sine x equals 0. And there is nothing in all three of those that I can factor out. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph this and we're going to find all the places that this guy equals zero and we're going to limit our search between zero and pi. Okay, the reason that we're going to do that is because we can't have a rectangle that starts over here somewhere in the negative numbers and we can't have a rectangle that starts over here larger than pi. So get your calculators out, pause the video real quick, and see if you can determine those values uh, where you get uh, uh, your graph to cross the x-axis on your calculator. All right, did you use your calculator? What would you get? If you graph this line right here, you should get that x equals what I got was 0 0.710. And we can write a 4 here if we want, or a 5, but what I would encourage you to do is truncate at three decimal places. So 0 0.710 is my value of x, which occurs between 0 and pi, and it does, that allows me to have the largest area rectangle. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that my length then is going to be pi minus 2 times 0 0.710. That's the length, okay, times, I shouldn't use an x there, should I? That's terrible. Times the sine of 0 0.710. And when you punch all that in together, um, that's going to give us the area of the rectangle right here in blue that fits under one arch of the sine curve. So let's write it down here so a little bit bigger we can see it. We're going to have pi minus 2 times 0 0.710 times the sine of 0 0.710. So punch that into your calculators real quick and see what you get. All right, so when you punch this into your calculator, you should get 1.12 units squared. So I think this is a really fascinating problem uh, and, it, and it shows us all the different tools that we have to do. And does 
one, two units makes sense? Just think about it for a minute. That, that's small enough. That sounds like something that could work. You know, if we got 27, I don't know. That's a little bit much, I think. But 1.12 units, that sounds like something that could work. So there you go. There's an optimization model uh, for finding a rectangular uh, shape under a sine curve.